Was that a crack about old gray-haired men that I heard? <laughs> well, Sonny and I are glad to have hair regardless. I wish I had as much as you did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming out tonight. This is uh, Lubbock Lights 2017, our third annual. My name is Andy Wilkinson. I'm artist in residence at the Southwest Collection. And I have the best, yeah. I happen to have the best seat in the house. I get to sit up here with uh, these three guys. I want to begin by saying, uh, besides welcome, and say that again, welcome, and thank you for being here. We couldn't do this if you didn't come. Um, yeah, give yourselves a round of applause. I, I need to begin after that by, I'm beginning all over the place here, by extending another welcome from our Chancellor, Robert Duncan, our President, Lawrence Skubenik, and our Provost, Michael Gallion, none of whom could be here tonight because they're all out working. <laughs> and I believe it. Uh, they're working, but I can tell you that this event and what this event represents is incredibly important to all of our administration here at Texas Tech. We couldn't be doing it without them. And uh, I can tell you work in the last uh, three, four years actually uh, to get it started, that we have uh, the greatest support that we could have. So uh, in absentia, let's give them a round of applause. So what is Lubbock Lights about? It's about, first of all, the lights of Lubbock. And we're not just talking about the spaceship. We're talking about the kind of lights that we know, the creative sparks of people who come from this place in this particular program in the field of music. We all know that this is a place that has produced and is producing an incredible number of creative people in the performing arts. And so we, when we started this program, we wanted to honor that legacy and at the same time to encourage the continuation of that legacy. Uh, it's an old story, but if you don't know where you've been, you don't know where you are. And if you don't know where you are, how do you know where you're going? So we want to take all those three parts and put them together. So this is a tribute to our heritage and an, a scholarly endorsement of the idea of creativity and the fact that we need to pay attention to that. And so this year we are joined by three very good friends of mine and people who have been my heroes for a long, long time. To my immediate right, Mr. Sonny Curtis. Sonny is a native of Meta, Texas. I, I think that's the whole town. <laughs> uh, I first came to know Sonny's music, and I didn't even know it was his music, because as a kid listening to the radio, some of my very favorite songs, later I find out, were written by Sonny Curtis. They were staples in my life, and they, they got me, they were one of the things that drove me to an interest in music. And since that time, I've gotten to follow him and, get, and got to know him and found not only is he a brilliant writer, as evidenced by those songs that I fell in love with so early, but he's also a terrific guitar player, a terrific vocalist, and a terrific human being. So one more round for Sonny Curtis. And to Sonny's right is another very dear friend, Mr. Lloyd Maines. I don't have to say a Grammy award-winning producer, but I will. Uh, Lloyd is part of, uh, as I said today at our creative process lunch, Lloyd is part of a 
West Texas musical dynasty. Uh, he grew up with his father and uncles and their Maine's Brothers Band before he and his brothers formed the Little Maine's Brothers. And uh, Lloyd uh, went on to perform and uh, with Joe Ely, among others, uh, on the road for a lot of years with, with that great band, the Joe Ely Band. But Lloyd has also made a, an incredible mark in the business of producing music in the, in the recording studio. And uh, all three of us on stage with him have used him as a producer one time or another. And uh, we all know what a brilliant producer he is. And not only can he do this stuff, but he has the best attitude on the planet. He helps you make your music. He doesn't bring you in to make his music. And that's something that is hard to top. And if you're going to be used by someone, it might as well be your friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. I thought you were going to say used by your producer. <laughs> and on the far end of our stage, uh, a fellow that uh, I first came to know uh, when I was going to Monterey High School, and I got to go to a, an assembly. Now, you know, we were young, and so an assembly was a big deal, and especially if one of your classmates was playing music, and that's when I met Joe Ely. <laughs> Joe is an incredible songwriter, a, and what we would call in the trade a journeyman musician, meaning he can do all kinds of things and does them. He's been on the road for a long time. He plays with a variety of different kinds of groups, been all over the planet. He has written uh, books, not just songs, but books. Uh, besides being such a terrific writer and such a terrific guitar player, one of the things that's always set Joe apart from other terrific writers and, and guitar players and singers is that I think Joe delivers more energy per performance than anybody I've ever seen. Yeah. I said it once today, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I don't think Joe's ever been known to phone in a, a gig. <laughs> he shows up for all it's worth, and that's a huge deal. So we are very excited to have Joe Ely, Lloyd Main, Sonny Curtis, and uh, maybe we ought to, since I've been blabbering a lot, let's start with some music. Sonny, would you play us a tune? And maybe, maybe talk about it a little bit after you play it. Talk about it just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yes. And uh, uh, first I'd like to say it's an honor to be back in Lubbock. I uh, always feel real warm when I look out the window and the plane's about to light and I see my old home. And, uh, of course, tomorrow I'll be down in Meadow walking up and down the streets. Uh, Sonny so Curtis Street? Oh, oh, well, could be. <laughs> <laughs> Absorbing all those memories. And it's a real honor for me to get... We've done shows together before, but we've never been on stage together. And uh, I really am honored to be with these great friends for a long, long time. And Lloyd here... An old friend going to help me as I go along, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to start <clears throat> with a song that uh, I wrote, uh, oh, uh, quite a few years ago, and I've, I've, I want to call the name of my co-writer, a great friend and good songwriter. His name was Ron Hellard in Nashville, and uh, he and I wrote this together. And it was recorded by a, a, a one of the, I think one of the best country singers that ever came along, a guy named Keith Whitley, and um, sadly, uh, sadly we lost Keith uh, uh, quite a few years ago. But I'd like to do this song. Uh, here we go. I'm no stranger to the rain 
I'm a friend of thunder, friend is it in a wonder lightning strikes me. I've fought with the devil, got down on his level, but I never gave in, so he gave up on me. I'm no stranger to the rain. I can spot bad weather, and I'm good at finding shelter in a down pool. I've been sacrificed by brothers, crucified by lovers, but through it all, I withstood the pain. I'm no stranger to the rain. When I get that foggy feeling, the one I'm feeling now, if I don't keep my head, I may drown. It's hard to keep believing, I'll even come out even, while the rain beats a hole in the ground. And the night, it's really coming down. I'm no stranger to the rain But there'll always be tomorrow And I'll beg still to borrow A little sunshine And I'll put this cloud behind me That's how the man designed me To ride the wind and dance in a hurricane I'm no stranger to the rain Oh no, I'm no stranger to the rain. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Let's hear from Joe and then we'll talk a little bit about music. All right. Yeah, I want to do a song that, uh, one of the first songs that I wrote uh, in Lubbock. I wrote it at a time when uh, everything was kind of not going so good, and I just got an offer to go to Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, and uh, sing with a band called the Neurotic Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't have any money to get there. So I figured hitchhiking was my best ticket. And uh, the, I got a, a ride right at the Lubbock city limits uh, with a truck that uh, just looked like it was just beat all to hell. It just kind of was weaving down the road and the guy saw me and he screeched on his brakes and the engine was smoking. And I ran up to the cab and there were trinkets you know, on all of the, you know, the visors and everything and post-it notes stuck all over the inside <laughs> with scriptures written on them. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I had an echo chamber and a guitar and the guy looked at me and said, what you carrying in that bag? <laughs> and I said, well, that's my guitar. He says, well, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> and I said, I'm going to play, I'm going to play it. And he said, what kind is it? And I said, it's electric. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, he, he takes off and, and this truck is weaving down the road, smoking nothing, you know, is coming up out of the floor. And uh, I asked him what he was hauling and he squinted his eyes and looked at me and said, dynamite. <laughs> And uh, I said, oh, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I got up cautiously in, into the cab, and, and he took off. And, uh, and immediately, we you know, headed uh, down uh, Rawls Lorenzo down there. I had originally told him I was going to Fort Worth, but he started talking about his lovers and his ex-lovers. And... And he went, started off way back, and, and as he came closer to the present, his foot got heavier on the, <laughs> on the foot feed, and, and his, he started crying. 
And so here I was in a dynamite truck with a guy out of his mind. And I told him, just let me off here in Guthrie, you know. <laughs> I'll find my way to Fort Worth. <clears throat> but here's that song that I wrote. Well, I left my home out on the great high plain Headed for some new terrain Standing on the highway with my coffee cup Wondering who was gonna pick me up I had my hopes up high I never thought that I Would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high well, the first ride I got was in a dynamite truck The driver kept telling me his bad luck As we swerved around the curves, I began to shout Hey, hey, mister, would you let me out? I had my hopes up high I never thought that I Would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high The beard on his face was all in a stubble Running from the law, we was going 99 Hey, mister, you're out of your mind I had my hopes up high I never thought that I Would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high and the next ride I got was with a preacher man Who told me that the wicked would be buried in sand I don't know why I did it, I lost control Hey, hey Papa, would you save my soul? I had my hopes up high I never thought that I Would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high Turn it around. And I finally got a ride on a carnival train. Nearly blew away in a hurricane. Thinking about that preacher down in New Orleans. Sitting on the Delta sifting dreams. I had my hopes up high. I never thought that I Would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high I never thought that I would ever wonder why I ever said goodbye I had my hopes up high So, uh, how were the neurotic sheep? <laughs> <laughs> they, they were uh, not real great. <laughs> but it, it was fun, you know. I made it to the cellar club, which was yeah. on the second floor. Right. <clears throat> I recall in high school, it was, our, it was sort of our uh, fantasy. If, if you couldn't go to El Paso, you could go to the Fort Worth and go to the cellar club. <laughs> Sonny. Yes. <laughs> Tell us a story and play us a song, man. Well, okay. Uh, this is a song that I wrote uh, while I was in the Army in basic training, believe it or not. And uh, uh, 
you can imagine how long that was ago. Uh, but uh, I, uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, I fired expert on the rifle range, and I uh, got a three-day pass for it. And that was at Fort Ord, California. And I'd been picking guitar with the Everly Brothers before I went into the Army. And, and they had just signed with Warner Brothers. And they were down in, in Hollywood uh, doing some Warner Brothers business. And so I decided to go down and, and see them. And my friend Jerry Allison, uh, the drummer with Buddy Holly and the Crickets, uh, he lived down there. And uh, we went over to see Don and Phil. And he said, sing them that new song you wrote. So uh, I sang it to him. And they said, well, we'll record that on our next session. And lo and behold, they did. And that's the story. Uh, of the of how this song came about you ready <laughs> old Lubbock dirt. Actually, it came out of the Lubbock wind, which was part dirt. <laughs> Some song that Lloyd uh, uh, helped me record way back in the early 70s, and uh, a song called Because of the Wind. Trees been at the West Texas border. Do you know why they've been swaying twine? The trees been because of the wind across that lonesome border. The trees been because of the wind. 
most all the time Have you seen my Carolee up in Amarillo? Have you seen my Carolee, the one that I call mine? If you see my Carolee with her hair of yellow, if you see my Carolee, Tell her I'm doing fine. She is to me like the breeze that blows from Corpus Christi. She is to me like the breeze that blows up from the sea. Now if she is like the breeze that blows from Corpus Christi, then I must be like the tree. Cause Caroline blows through me Do you know why the trees be at the West Texas border? Do you know why they've been swayed and twined? The trees be Cause the wind across that lonesome border the trees been because of the wind almost all the time the trees been because of the wind almost all Joe, would you talk just a minute about uh, the, this great sense of place that seems to, uh, if not all of your writing, it certainly is just under the surface and that part that isn't right on top. It's really an amazing thing that you do, the different stories, but this great sense of being there. Well, you know, whenever I start a song, I, I have always kind of been in a place that's, that's unique that inspires me you know at least it adds to the story and uh like in that song is just a couple of cities and a little wind and and dust and all but you get the feeling of where you are you know and each each song that I do I I try to make you know whoever's listening to uh you know get that sense of where they are you know in inside the song cool Sonny, what are you going to do? Oh, uh, I'm going to do a, a song now that uh, I wrote for a TV show. And uh, this was, uh, oh, uh, it aired the first time on CBS on September the 19th of 1970. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that was, uh, that'll give you an idea of, uh, I was thinking that uh, maybe I shouldn't, Shouldn't do it because it's like over 40. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> like over 40 years old, but then I got to thinking everything I got's over 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but uh, this was a really a lucky break for me and a, kind of a fluke uh, because I'm mostly a rock and roll songwriter and a country songwriter, but uh, there's a friend of mine that worked at the Williams and Price Agency uh, uh, in Beverly Hills. I lived in California at the time, and uh, I knew him through Roger Miller uh, because Roger and I were good friends, and, um, and so we became good friends because he worked for Roger Miller. Uh, they managed uh, Roger as well as Mary Tyler Moore, and he called me about 11 o'clock one morning and said, uh, Sonny, they're going to do a, a TV show with Mary Tyler Moore. Would you be interested in writing a theme song? <laughs> well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I will. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, he came to my house in his lunch break and dropped off like a four-page treatment of the show, and it had very little information on it. Like a young girl from the Midwest moves to Minneapolis, the big city, and gets a, a job at a TV station with a boss that uh, is overbearing and rents apartment that she has a hard time affording. And that's about all I had to go on. But sometimes it, that's good because too much information will bog you down. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I called him back in about two hours and said, who do I sing this to? And, and he sent me to a guy named James L. Brooks at uh, CBS. I don't know if you remember Gunsmoke, those big Quonset Hut kind of buildings. That was where their offices were. And uh, this James L. Brooks, was he's kind of cold, and he said, uh, we're not near to the point of choosing a song, but I'll listen to what you have. And so I, I got my guitar out and sang it to him, and he said, sing that again. So <laughs> anyway, before I left that afternoon, and that was before the sun went down. He had had me sing, sing it about 10 times, and he said, I want a cassette uh, recorder. Y'all remember those uh, um, <laughs> sent in? Because I want to send this, I want to take this song with me to Minneapolis this week and to uh, when we record the first part of that show. Anyway, I, that was one of the luckiest days of my life, and I'd like to sing it for you right now. A three, four. Who can turn the world on with her smile? Who can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile? Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each glance and every little movement you show it Love is all around, no need to waste it You can now the town, why don't you take it? You're gonna make it after all Hang on just a second <clears throat> The very first season of uh, that show was a different set of lyrics because a lot of people may not remember, but uh, that show, when it started off, they thought it was going to be a flop uh, because it wasn't getting very much uh, good attention. And so um, I, uh, I, I wrote a, a different set of lyrics the first season. And uh, at the end of that first season, the show had caught on, and uh, uh, James L. Brooks called me and said, Sonny, we need some uh, different lyrics because she's obviously made it. And, <laughs> and so uh, that's when I wrote that verse that you just heard. So I thought it might be interesting. I, I sh probably should have done this in reverse, but I don't think of things that quickly. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, didn't you write that other verse while you were on a fishing boat? I wrote this, that, uh, yeah, that song, that verse that I just sang. Uh, I had a friend from Nashville come out who wanted to go deep sea fishing, and his wife and my wife got on this uh, boat that took us out into the Pacific Ocean, and it had bunks on it, and we went to, went to, uh, our bunks about 
11 o'clock at night and we, they woke us up at four o'clock in the morning and man we were just kind of out there just bobbing up and down like a stopper and <laughs> and and um i was so sick and i thought <laughs> i thought you know i think a little breakfast will probably cure me <laughs> wrong <laughs> While everybody else was deep sea fishing, I went to my bunk and I lay there all day. And while I was there, I wrote the lyrics to that, ver <laughs> to that verse you just heard. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to do the, the second one first, or the first one second. Uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this is the first season, a three, four. How will you make it on your own? This world is awfully big And girl, this time you're all alone But it's time you started giving It's time you let someone else do some giving Love is all around, no need to waste it You can now the town, why don't you take it? You might just make it after all Love is all around, why don't you take it all You're gonna make it after all You're gonna make it after all Thank you. <laughs> the Lord just uh, requested, uh, he just requested a, a song that I wrote uh, back in the early 80s and uh, when I was leaving leaving New Mexico. I mean, I was leaving uh, Fort Sumner, New Mexico. And uh, I had paid my admission to go in the Billy the Kid Museum there in Fort Sumner. <laughs> and uh, there was nothing, zero in there that had anything to do with Billy the Kid. <laughs> there was one photograph of him. And uh, that was blown up at, by the front door. And then the rest of the museum was just pieces of wagon wheels and, you know, rusty spurs and stuff like that. And uh, so, it, you know, it really pissed me off that I had uh, paid, you know, paid my money to go in there. And, and um, so by the time I made it to Clovis, I had rewritten the life of Billy the Kid. LAUGHTER <laughs> And then, uh, then that comes up to the present day. A few few months back, somebody discovered an old tin type photo in a secondhand store, uh, and they made prints of it. And the, they say that it's Billy the Kid, the second known photograph. It sold on auction for five million dollars. And uh, and. They have proclaimed it the actual second photo of Billy the Kid, but Billy the Kid in the photo is playing croquet. <laughs> and that just blows my image of him all to hell. So I had to rewrite the first verse. <laughs> Sonny reminded me of that, rewriting a song to, to fit the times, you know. <laughs> But uh, so I had to say, well, me and Billy the Kid never got along. I didn't like the way he played croquet and he wore his gun all wrong. But we had the same girlfriend and he never forgot it. She had a cute little chihuahua till one day he up and shot it. He rode the hard country down the New Mexico line. He had a silver pocket watch that he never did whine. 
He crippled a piano player for playing his favorite song. No, me and Billy the Kid, we never got along. Yeah, me and Billy the Kid never got along. I didn't like the way he buckled his belt and he wore his gun all wrong. He was bad to the bone, all hopped up on speed. I would have left him alone. If it wasn't for that senorita, he gave her silver and he paid her hotel bill. But it was me she loved and she said she always will. I'd always go and see her. When Billy was gone, yeah, me and Billy the Kid, we never got along. Never got along. I didn't like the way he parked his gremlin and he wore his gun all wrong. One day I said to Billy, I got this foolproof scheme. We'll rob Wells Fargo. It's busting at the seams. I admit that I framed him, but I don't feel no remorse. It was just my way of getting even with the man who shot my horse. Yeah, Billy reached for his gun, but his gun was on wrong. Yeah, me and Billy the Kid, we never got along. We never got along, but I did like the way he swayed in the wind while I played him his favorite song. Now my baby sings harmony with me to la cucaracha. She winds her silver pocket watch and pets her new chihuahua. I moved into the hotel. I got a room with a shower. We lay and listen to that watch tick hour after hour. Outside I hear the wind blowing oh so strong. Me and Billy the Kid, we never got along. We never got along. true story. Yeah. <laughs> well, we kind of got a theme going here because Sonny's got one that fits, uh, <laughs> fits right in there. Yeah. Talk about this song, too. Well, yeah, I... Uh, no Chihuahuas, right? Uh, this is a song that I wrote many, many years ago, uh, as I mentioned before. <laughs> I wrote a lot of my songs many, many years ago. I was over in Slayton, Texas, sitting in my uh, living room, and uh, it was all late afternoon, and I uh, didn't have much else to do. And when I don't have much else to do, I try to write a song. And I really wasn't trying that hard. I was just kind of fooling around. And uh, it's, uh, it's kind of scary because uh, I never wrote this down. I just carried it in my head until I, till we needed it. And uh, I just wonder if there's anything else that I uh, carried up there that, that, I, 
we might have forgotten about. Um, but this, uh, <clears throat> this is probably my most important copyright, and so uh, I should have written it down. <laughs> Breaking rocks in the hot sun, I fought the law and a law won. I fought the law and a law won. I needed money and I had none. I fought the law and a law won. I fought the law and a law won. I left my baby and I feel so bad Guess my race is run She's the best thing I ever had I fought the law and a law won I fought the law and a law won Robbing people with a zip gun I fought the law and a Law one, I fought the law and a law one. I left my little baby in yeah. good fun. I fought the law and a law one. I fought the law and a law one. Left my baby in a field so bad. Guess my race is run. She's the best thing I ever had. I fought the law and a law won. I fought the law and a law won. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Sonny, man, that's, that's, uh, I, I have to tell you, I, I think I've told you this before, but uh, me and Lloyd were touring around England in, uh, what was that, 78, something like that. We were playing a place called the Venue Club, and uh, while we were doing a sound check one afternoon, uh, the, the promoter came back uh, to the backstage and said, there's a group of scruffy-looking gentlemen outside. <laughs> And said they want to say hello, and said they were in a band, and uh, and they said the the band's name was The Clash, and would would we have them back there? And not, we'd never heard of The Clash at that time, because <laughs> so yeah, they they came back, and uh, they were really friendly, and they uh, my songs had been played on the BBC radio, and they they were uh, fans of this song called She Never Spoke Spanish to Me, and and. Uh, and uh, and we got to talking, and uh, they had had this had never been to Texas, but they had this you know this passion to go there sometime, and they loved all the music like they loved Marty Robbins ballads, and like uh, you know the Ballad of El Paso and uh, the Streets of Laredo, and also they mentioned a song that was familiar to me. Uh, Sonny song, I Fought the Law and the Law Won. And uh, they said that they had a top ten single of that on the BBC. And and I said, you do? That's That was written by a guy from right around Lubbock, Texas. They said, oh, we know. We know all about everything about Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> and I'm saying, am, am, did I travel through the time warp or something? <laughs> And anyway, uh, the, a few months after that, after we came back to Texas, I get a call from Joe Strummer, and they want to tour, and they want to go to Laredo, El Paso, Wichita Falls. They want to go to Amarillo and Lubbock and, and to see uh, where, where uh, all this music, you know, Buddy Holly and, and Sonny and all the, the music writers came from. And I thought that was pretty amazing, you know, to... Uh, to be all the way across the ocean, and uh, and you know they, 
hear about Lubbock through, uh, uh, I thought, the law and the law one. <laughs> and, and when, when we got here, we, uh, the streets scared them to death because <laughs> they were like four lanes wide and there was a car about every 30 minutes, you know. <laughs> and they said, well, where's all the people? And they said, well, they're all here. You know? <laughs> You just can't see him. <laughs> anyway, here, I'll, I'll play that. Uh, we've been playing our own songs, but I want to play the Butch Hancock song that, uh, yeah. I met her in old Mexico. She was laughing sad. In a smoky room that no one could see Her favorite poets all agree Spanish is the love tongue But she never spoke Spanish to me She was born in Monterey all the Christmas songs were sung The Padre knew what she'd grow up to be Saints and sinners all agree Spanish is a loving tongue But she never spoke Spanish to me from Texas, son And where's your boots and where's your gun I smiled and said I got guns no one can see We laughed at that We both agreed Spanish is a loving tongue But she never spoke Spanish I left her in old Mexico She was laughing sad and young In a smoky room that no one could see Her favorite poets all agree Spanish is a loving tongue But she never spoke Spanish to me She never spoke Spanish to me I might, I might add one, one thing about that, uh, about us touring with the Clash. We, we did uh, several, uh, several dates in Great Britain. We did uh, about eight dates in the, in the States here. And, you know, I was, I was born and raised in Acup, Texas, and I thought I'd seen it all. But uh, touring with the Clash, I saw some different things. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> it was educational. It was. It built, built character. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. To say the least. All right. Yes, uh, I think this will be real appropriate. We all decided that this would be a good thing to do uh, to kind of close everything out. Three, four, one. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye. Uh, that'll be the day when you make me cry. You say you're gonna leave. You know it's a lie. But that'll be the day, hey, hey, when I die. Well, Cupid shot. It. He shot it at your heart. And if we ever part, then I'll leave.